A red herring question is a type of oddball question that survey writers often include in online surveys to help measure which respondents are fully engaged in the survey and those who are not. In this video, members from our market research company, Drive Research, will share with you what they believe to be is the best red herring survey question to ask. Keep watching. So what's the best red herring question? Uh, if you're trying to catch dishonest or distracted survey respondents, I think the best approach is to throw in a fake brand or company name in the question. So this red herring question works by uh, essentially making up a uh, sometimes silly company and inserting the name into a list of other well-known companies. The idea here is that respondents who are not paying attention to the question um, may select the fake company name and be flagged for poor quality removal later on. So why is this the best red herring question? Uh, I prefer to include this type of red herring question because it's a subtle way to maintain the quality of your data. Uh, the actual question and most of the options are actually legitimate. So you're not insulting the respondent's intelligence with an obvious question. The fake name will be ignored by uh, your valid respondents and you'll still catch those who are not carefully answering the questions. So here's an example of the red hand question I'm talking about. Um, let's say it's about smartphone manufacturers. So let's say you ask a multiple response question, uh, which of the following smartphone manufacturers have you purchased from? Um, selecting all that apply. We have a list that includes well-known smartphone manufacturers like Apple, Samsung, Google, LG, Motorola, uh, and throwing a fake one there um, called phony, kind of punny name there. But um, the idea is that by including the fake one, uh, respondents aren't paying attention, they select all of them, including phony, and you can see that later on when you're cleaning your data um, and improve the uh, overall quality. What's the best red herring question? I think it's including a forced response within grid questions. So grid questions are one of those things in market research that are great when used sparingly. Typically, we like to see grid questions that include up to 10 rows maximum, but sometimes it's necessary to go beyond this. So additionally, we like to limit the number of grid questions used in a survey because it can be really cumbersome for respondents to answer. Again, sometimes it's necessary to include include multiple grid questions to meet the goals and objectives of the survey. So here's a quick example of a red herring used in a grid question. You can see how the question is phrased at the top. Rows represent separate behaviors, and then the columns represent the different response options for each behavior. So note that the second to last row states select no change for this category. So this is where the red herring comes into play. Anyone who doesn't answer accordingly will be removed from the analysis, and remember, Data is only valuable if it's deemed high quality, which includes several different factors, including quality of the respondents, respondents and respondent engagement. So red herrings are just one way market researchers can remove low quality survey responses or respondents who were speeding through the survey. So one of the best ways to go about a red herring question is to include outlier answers. So um, similar to including a um, fake brand name, you would just go about it. Um, for example, if a survey respondent's favorite color is a giraffe, um, they're clearly not paying attention and just trying to get to the end of the survey. Sometimes longer surveys are unavoidable. To ensure respondents are answering honestly and accurately, um, we always try to ask a question using outlier answers in a longer survey. Um, just to keep data clear of survey speakers. So an example of using LIR answers might look something like, which of the following is not a sport? A, soccer, B, basketball, C, cookies, and D, baseball. If the respondent selects something other than cookies, they're clearly not paying attention. Using this type of red herring question can help minimize responses from those who are just trying to get to the end of the survey, perhaps for a reward or just to be done with it. 